everyone, welcome back to the Biology Man channel. If you like watching my video, please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Today we'll talk about the pregenetic too. Last time we learned about the DNA structure, you can revisit the video if you forgot. In this video, we will talk about chromosome. In the concept of chromosome, you will learn another term that called chromatids. And we have another term called sister chromatids and non-sister chromatids. There is another very important terminology that is the homologous chromosome. You always see this term. First of all, I would like to talk about what is chromosome. Actually, it is very simple. Chromosome is DNA plus protein. On the book, you always see this X structure to represent a chromosome and you always see a circle in the center. But how the DNA and protein form the structure like this is what we are going to talk about. In order to let you understand the concept better, I will use this paper to represent the proteins. And I will use this red string to represent the DNA. Let me remind you the structures of DNA is a double helix structure and it contains two nucleic acids. You can watch back the pregenetics one. And now I use a single string to represent this double helix structure of DNA. So now this is one DNA and plus some of the proteins they add together to form the chromosome. And this DNA is very, very, very long. Now I will show you how this long DNA plus the proteins will make up the chromosome. It's very simple. The DNA will just coil around the protein like this. And in this video, I just post one protein, but in the actual situation, there are so many protein and the coiling method here is simplified. Here show you the real situations and you can see there are so many proteins involved in the coiling of the DNA. The white one is the protein and you can see the DNA is coiled on it. Okay, this is the finishing structure. I put it just next to the X chromosome structure. You will feel something wrong that as I mentioned, the chromosome, this X structure is formed by the DNA and the protein. But now it is not thing like an X structure. Your observation is totally correct. This is not a full chromosome. You can see that it is not one chromosome. It's just like half of the chromosome. But we won't call this structure called half chromosome. We have a professional term. We call this just half chromosome as chromatid. Okay, in this situation, I would like to ask you if I want to make this X like chromosome, how many chromatids I need? Yes, you're right. We need two chromatids to form this X structure of chromosome. Okay, here come with another question. If one chromatid is formed by one long DNA strand and one protein. How many DNA and protein do we need in order to form two chromatids? Yes, you are right. We need two protein and two DNA. So we can form by this two protein and DNA, we can form two chromatids. The two chromatids will not separate like this. They need to have some attachment. A certain point of the chromatids, they can attach together. That is, the DNA can attach to another DNA at some point so that the two chromatids will stay together. And usually, we will use a circle to represent the point that the two DNA attach together. At the position they attach to each other, we call it central mirror. In the chapter 11 cell divisions, you will see this word again. Up to this point, you know that the chromosome is formed by two chromatids and the two chromatids will join together at a point. The point is called central mirror. The next question is why suddenly there are two DNA? One DNA form one chromatid. So here are two DNA. Where do these two DNA come from? And are they the same? Now let's talk about this. As we mentioned in the last video, the DNA molecule will have the nitrogenous space in each nucleotide, and they will have a specific sequence of the nitrogenous space, just like this. And this strand of DNA is the DNA that forms one of the chromatids in the chromosome, this one. And let's take a look at this DNA, which forms another chromatids in the chromosome. 
Do you think the nucleotide sequence in this DNA will be the same as the left one? It is very important for you to know that these two DNA actually are formed by DNA replication, so the genetic material inside actually are identical. That means the nucleotide sequence in this DNA will be exactly the same as this one. So if this one is T, then this one must be T. If this one is A, then here must be A. And if here is G, then this one must be G. And keep going. And the nucleotide sequence of this two DNA are exactly the same. You can check for it. Therefore, the genetic material in these two chromatids are exactly the same. They are identical. Okay, after learning what it means of chromosome and chromatid, two chromatids will form one chromosome. And let's learn some more term now. And the one I'm going to talk about is the sister chromatids and non-sister chromatids. In order to understand this concept, we need to talk about the romantic relationship of the sperm of your dad and the egg of your mom. Each sperm of your dad contains 23 chromosomes in the nuclei. That is 23 of this structure. And the sperm swim up to the oviduct and meet romantically with the ovum of your mom. Inside the egg, that means the ovum, it contains 23 chromosomes, 23 this structure. And when they meet, one of the sperm will get into the ovum, that is fertilization. When fertilization takes place, the chromosome, the 23 chromosomes, will go into the egg and meet together with the 23 chromosome in the ovum. And the sperm finish its job. Bye bye. After the fertilization, this is the fertilized egg, and it contains 46 chromosomes. You have to remember 46 this number. So when we consider the chromosome inside a cell, a body cell, we consider not only one chromosome, but 46. I try to draw chromosomes, but 46 is too much for me. I only draw this chromosome, I think. It is enough for me to explain the concept. Let me check for your understanding how many chromosomes are here. Let's count together here with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 chromosomes and plus this one, that will be 8. And how many chromatids are there? Remember, one chromosome contains two chromatids. Here we have 8 chromosomes, so we have 16 chromatids. And here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Totally 16 chromatids. Okay, let's go back to the concept of sister chromatids and non-sister chromatids. When we talk about sister, they have a closer relationship to each other, right? So, sister chromatids are close to each other. Sister chromatids are the two chromatids in the same chromosome. Here is one chromatid and here is another chromatid. These two chromatids, they are so close to each other and most importantly, these two chromatids contain identical genetic information that is an identical nucleotide sequence. So we call these two chromatids sister chromatids. Then, what is the non-sister chromatids? If the chromatids are not sister chromatids, they are the non-sister chromatids. For example, here is the one chromatid and it is a non-sister chromatid with and other chromatids, for example, this chromatids, because they are not in the same chromosome. Let me repeat the concept. These two are the sister chromatids, and these two are sister chromatids, sister chromatids, sister chromatids. Here is the final concept I would like to explain, that is homologous chromosomes. You always see this trend in different topics like human reproduction, basic genetics, and cell division. It is an important turn. When we talk about homologous chromosome, we need to talk about your father and mother again. Here is the egg of your mom. It contains 23 chromosomes inside the nucleus of it. 
because the nucleus is too small, so I just put the chromosomes outside the nucleus. But in the real situations, the chromosome should be inside the nucleus. And there should be 23 chromosomes contained in the egg. In order to have reproduction in human, your dad contribution is important. The sperm carry the 23 chromosome and reach the egg. And the sperm and egg will have fertilization. After fertilization, the 23 chromosomes in the sperm will go into the egg. Here, I only draw three chromosomes, but in the real situation, that should be 23. After fertilization, there will be 46 chromosomes inside the fertilized egg in total. Now, Miss Man wants you to observe. Is there anything that special about these chromosomes? Some smart students may observe that some of the chromosomes, they are so similar. For example, this one and this one. They are very similar in the shape and the size. Also, you find an other two chromosomes, their size and shape are very similar. They just look like a pair. And these two are the same. And you are right. They are actually just like one pair, one pair. Here are three pairs of chromosomes. And we say that they are the homologous chromosomes. Here is one pair of homologous chromosome. This is the second pair of homologous chromosome. And this is the third pair. Now, there are three pairs of homologous chromosome in this fertilized egg. But in this real situation, there should not be three pairs. It should be 23 pairs of homologous chromosome. And how can we identify the homologous chromosome inside a cell? It is very easy. Actually, their size and shape are exactly the same. So you can find the homologous chromosome by their size and shape, except the sex chromosome, that is the X and Y chromosomes. And the Y chromosome is much shorter than the X chromosome. So the pair of sex chromosomes, they do not have same size and shape. Please remember, in a pair of homologous chromosome, one is from the father and one is from mother. From father, from mother, from father, from mother. I know it is quite annoying I keep repeating it, but it is so important. Okay. We finished the second episode of the pregenetics. I hope you understand all this terminology after watching this video. If you want to know the concept what is allele, gene, and gene sequence, I highly recommend you to watch the next episode of pregenetics. Don't forget to like my video and subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Bye.